welcome to my channel. Feel free to subscribe if you're interested in any of these things right here. Yes, my hands are orange and I will get into it in just a second. Um, new subscribers, hello. Old subscribers, hi guys, how are you guys doing? Um, I hope you're doing well and if not, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, I'm doing pretty good today and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to try to keep that perspective. Um, I'm going to try to keep a, a <laughs> upbeat perspective, I suppose I will say. Um, so number one, last night around one o'clock in the morning, I used the overtone ginger on my hair and yeah, I kind of like it. Uh, it seems to be okay. And my hair does seem to be much more, um, how do you say? Well, vibrant and refreshed. Now, Overtone did send me some, uh, what is the word? The gloves. They sent me gloves in the mail, which I willingly neglected to put on because here's the thing. It could be vegan and it could be cruelty free and it can be shabba lava ding dong, okay? But I want to know how long the fucker stays on the skin, okay? <laughs> I want to know the nitty gritty stuff. I want to know the real deal. I want to know the full meal deal, okay? I want to know what love is um but yeah so anyways so yeah I, I look a little different today because i got this vintage nightgown in the mail um which i give you permission to bury me in and if you don't bury me in this i'm gonna be so fucking pissed off i don't give a fuck how much i weigh by the time i die i don't give a fuck how skinny how fat how short how tall if i magically get taller this fucker goes on this is what i'm getting buried in okay this is the last like, this is the last look, okay? This is the, the outfit for the death, okay? <laughs> like, this is the... Who is she? She's dead. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so, like, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my nose itches. Oh, my God, my nose itches. The one thing about wearing clown white makeup is when your nose itches, bitch, you can't just scratch it because you got to pat. You got to pat, pat, pat. You know what I'm saying? Any part of your face that itches, honey, you just got to pat it. You got to... You know what I'm saying? Um... And my nose always itches with this, I don't know. I think it's because I have these flyaway hairs that hang around my face. And they're like, they get up on my nose and they, dig -dig -dig -dig. Um, but yeah, am I embarrassed that I have fucking ginger colored hands? A little bit. I was looking for my gloves today, but then I couldn't find them. And I was like, fuck it. We ball. <laughs> like, fuck it. Like, yes, they are orange. Yeah, my hair is gingery red. And you know what? It looks good too. So whatever, I don't care. Um, but yeah, how are you guys doing? Uh, what are you watching? <laughs> what are you listening to? What are you reading? I wanna know. Feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. Um, yeah, as always, try to keep the comments a little classy. And some of the people have been getting a little aggressive with their compliments and I'm grateful, thank you so much. But honeybee, I am married and I'm very open about I've been married for 14 years, I've been with my husband for 15, and I am attracted to women. So let's get one thing straight. Like I said it before, my true loves are with my husband, but there is a Willard and it's a Drop Dead Fred. So if you are not Willard or Drop Dead Fred, don't comment down below anything about me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, 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 it's people have been getting aggressive with their compliments and like that's nice thank you but i'm not a piece of meat this is not a carniceria this is not a carniceria i am not on display for you to just you know mm -mm, don't fuck with me bitch thank you so much for respecting my boundaries like oh my god it's so great that we can make a community isn't it um anyways <laughs> yeah anyways i love this dress <laughs> I was not young. And I've been wanting to put little ribbons in my hair. And yesterday I went out and I bought ribbons. And then, just fuck it. There's a little, some of it is all frayed. And whatever, whatever, whatever. Don't look at it. But I just wanted to do that today. I've been like really into older Hollywood movies lately. Really into them. And so, like, I love the way the women look. They're so cute. I don't know. There's something so elegant. Mm, about black and white movies and like I know it was a completely different time period but personally for me there's something so beautiful and elegant I don't know mm. but other than that so what I've been watching I watched Hot Fuzz and I watched Pride and Prejudice 
that's what I've been watching today. I'm not going to lie to you. Do you come here to get the truth or do you come here for me to lie to you? Because if I lie to you, I'm going to say, no, my, my, my little thing is not frayed. No, I did not cut my ribbons. If, I, if you want me to lie, I'll lie to you. No, I didn't cut my ribbons in my hair with the fillet knife I use for catfish. Was it clean? Yes. Do I use it for catfish? Maybe. I'm just kidding. No, yeah, the truth is I, the, I used a fillet knife to cut these, and so now there's a little thing. And yeah, my hands are orange. This is just a real me. I'm just being fucking real with you. I get dressed like this. I wear this shit. I buy crazy vintage clothes online. And I'm just real. Like, I'm just a real human being. I don't, I'm not looking for a boyfriend. I'm not looking for a husband. Bitch, I got a husband, honey. I've had one for 14 years. I don't need another one. Okay, so thank you, but no thank you. This is, and if you start coming at me like I'm a piece of meat in a carniceria, I'm going to delete your comment and I'm going to hide your ass from my channel. You're going to go into the shadow realm, pendeja. Okay, I'm sorry. That's just how it is. Like, anyways, that's just how I feel. I don't know. People, there's a difference between someone being nice. You're so pretty. You're so funny. La, 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 right? There's difference in compliments from someone saying, you are beautiful, like, you know, you're pretty. Okay, thank you so much. I have no problems with that. It's when someone is getting creepy and possessive. That, oh, you're sexy, I want you, um, blah, blah. Honey, I'm not a fucking piece of meat. Like, yes, I am. But here's the thing. I'm a concept. I'm not even real. Like, I'm here and I'm not. Do you understand that? And if not, just shut the video off. If you can't handle it, this is the real deal, honey. And it's not. At the same time, they're they're two things at the same time. It is and it is ain't. <laughs> it is and it is ain't. So that's just how it is. Maybe. I don't know. Um, can scientists confirm it? No. Can math confirm it? I don't think so. Philosophy majors are are perplexed. I'm just kidding. But yeah, anyways, it's just it just irked me a little. Whoops. Oops. Anyways, oopsie days. <laughs> Zip and lock it, put it in your pocket, save it for later. So I think I've talked a bunch, too much. <clears throat> Hi, how are you guys doing? Yeah, so I watched Hot Fuzz today and I watched Pride and Prejudice. Those are the two things I watched today. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and then I got, um, I ordered a copy of Pink Flamingos, John Waters Pink Flamingos. Um, it, it's so funny. I've just really been in, like, a John Waters kick lately. So, um, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm not sorry. I lied. Oh. <laughs> um, I lied. I'm sorry. I'm trying. No, I'm not. Fuck. God damn it. I'm not sorry. I've been on a John Waters kick lately. I ordered a copy of Pink Flamingos. Hi, welcome to my channel. Let's just, let's restart. Can we restart? And may I? May I? Here's the thing. I'm too much of a bitch to like drink coffee in this nightgown because it's so nice and it's vintage. And I just, I love it. Here's the issue I'm having today. Number one, I'm annoyed. I think most of the world is annoyed today. Then I'm trying to keep like a positive perspective to keep my head from falling off. I should tie a green ribbon around my neck. If I take it off, my head falls off. No, I'm kidding. Um, hmm. Anyways, I'm trying to keep, uh, you know, it's all just, it's all a fucking show. It's all just, you know, it's a thing. And so you got to keep going with the thing. And it's like, you know, whatever, whatever. <sighs> so anyways, I've been annoyed. But like this came in, I was like, oh my God, I feel so good. Like, I feel so good. Like, if you are very pissed off with the way the world is, you've got to like start coming back to yourself. You got to start detaching, radically detach, radically self-accept, start coming back to your home on the inside what are the things that make you happy what are the things that little you loves like do you have a favorite show um is there something from your youth that you could grasp onto and be like this is something i used to love you know um i used to love uh planting is it milk sorry milkweed because we would raise monarch butterflies when i was younger at school we would raise monarch butterflies and one of my favorite things was to watch the butterflies develop and then release them into the school garden and watch the garden like we had some kind of little control over the, the how do you say the population of the butterflies in the garden by raising ours and releasing them 
the tiny control of observing and, and watching and then releasing. And it, it was a great practice. You could go on Amazon and order butterfly kits. Um, and then you can like raise your own butterflies and practice detachment that way. There's many, many ways for you to radically detach and accept that we are and we are not. And both things can be true simultaneously. And both things are okay. Like you're okay right now. You, you really are. Um, even if you're going through something so horrifically psychotically like even let's say <sighs> bitch my hair's getting all fucked up because i'm getting a little too excited so we're just gonna have to let that shit fall early okay we're gonna have to let that fall early but here's the thing even if you're going through a personal situation that is absolutely insidiously insane there's still hope there's still hope left in the bottom of that Pandora's box of experience, you will be okay. The sun will rise again tomorrow. And will we all die from it? I don't know, but it's exciting to think maybe. Um, you know, so c'est la vie, mon ami. It's okay. You're going to be fine. We're going to be fine together. You and I, let's stick together. You want to keep coming to this channel and watching stupid fucking videos? Great. Until the day I die, I'll try to keep uploading dumb fucking videos. That's the one thing I can tell you. Now, every once in a while, I'll take a break because I fall into depression. But I like also being honest with you about my depression and vlogging about it and being like hey listen bitch i'm depressed like uh, <laughs> i'm depressed like <laughs> but yeah i mean i cope with humor and i cope with talking to friends sharing memes guttural screaming at two o'clock in the morning and see if anyone's gonna call the cops um you know just like girly things just things that make me feel happy alive what better way to feel alive than drive to some random intersection at two o'clock in the morning when no one's there Roll your windows down and turn your big scary dog music on with lots of screaming and, and, and anger and then screaming along with it as loud as you can, releasing all that at an intersection. And when the light turns green, you just go. You can do that. No one's going to stop you. I don't think the cops will pull you over either for getting in your car and screaming. There was times where I felt like I could not express myself. And so that's what I would do. I'd get in my car and I'd scream as loud as I could while driving. It's movement. Nobody gives a fuck. All their windows are up anyways. And nobody's going to call the cops on you for doing it. Now, should you be going 100 and screaming? No, but I mean, hey, listen, your life is yours. It's none of my business what you do. And honestly, if I'm being honest, there's been times in my life where I've been in a car and I just wanted to see how fast the fucker could go. I wanted to see how fast she could fly down these roads. Was there people around me? No, I waited until there was a long stretch of road and no cars because I didn't want to get pulled over. And if something horrific happened, click that ticket, <laughs> click that seatbelt on, click it and take it, baby. But sometimes if I'm confessing the truth, which I guess I can right now, we're friends, right? So let me tell you a little truth about me or a lie. I don't know. It depends. If you're the feds or the cops, like this is totally a lie. But if you're my friends, Maybe I did it, maybe I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I was coming home from a trip and I was just feeling a certain way. And I was in the car and I was like, man. And I had music going and I got this wild hair. I get these mischievous feelings to do things randomly. Sometimes I go into parking lots that are empty and I'll do donuts. And nobody's around. It doesn't hurt anybody. And so I'll just do donuts and then I'll leave. And then it's I feel so cleansed. Um, anyways, now is it safe? I don't know. And I don't really give a fuck if I'm being honest. Like, what are you gonna do? Wait, oh, I, I confessed I went to a parking lot and did a donut. Wait, okay, and it was fun. Nobody was there. There were no cars, there were no cops. It was an abandoned shopping mall kind of thing. Like, get over yourself. Anyways, was it absolutely deliciously fun and, and riveting and exciting? Yes. Sometimes I like doing exciting things. I don't do drugs. And so what I do is experiences, other experiences. So sometimes I'll be on these long stretches of road between states in the middle of nowhere. And I just like not during the night because during the night you could die. Anything could cross that road at any time and kill you fast. But during the day, and there's no one and no cops and nothing. And it's just you and that road. I like getting my car past the hundred and just seeing before she starts rattling. I just want to test the limits of my car, test the boundaries of my surroundings and feel something. And so I do, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun to go through it. 
fast in a car. And it's no surprise that, you know, I've told people, if I had a million dollars, I'd buy a ranch out in the middle of nowhere in Texas, and I'd start practicing and become a barrel racer because I really want to do that. I love barrel racing. I love watching it, and I love seeing it and being a part of that. And I, and I follow a lot of different barrel racers. There's, like, tons of girls on YouTube who have, like, independent vlogs that I go and watch. And I know I look like this. I look like a fucking vampire. Um, but it, And it's in my name, South Texas Vampire. I was born in San Antonio. I am a part of the Texas culture. So even though I look like this, I still enjoy devouring the rodeo. It's so much fun. And there's this sweet old man who is on the internet. I don't know his name, but he's so uplifting and he's so funny. I don't know who he is, but there was a video and he was at the rodeo and he was like talking to people in England. He was like, what's up fascists? And he was like, this little thing called the rodeo. Maybe you don't know what it is, but this is where we have fun. <laughs> and like, I didn't know until this year that it was illegal to have a rodeo in England or Great Britain or where, whatever the fuck it's called. You know, like the place where the white people are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, the England and what do you guys call it? Is it what is it called now? Because I'm getting a parcel from there and it's under the name Great Britain. Is it England? Is it Great? What is it? What is it technically labeled as? You know how like America is like United States of America, US, USA, America. Like there's so many names for it, but like what is it? Anyways, England or whatever. It's like banned. Like there's no rodeo there, which sucks. And people are like, oh, it's they're like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you're from, you know, Great Britain, England, whatever. And you follow me that's cool one day i'll come see you guys okay one day hopefully i don't know maybe not maybe i'll die before then oh maybe i'll see you in spirit i don't know but here's the thing oh, yeah maybe one day i'll go but yeah like over there it's banned and i live in south texas in texas the livestock and rodeo it's huge here um it, it's really an important part of the culture of the, the society the vaqueros is it vaqueros vaqueros the, the um, hispanic cowboys and the the um I know there's just it's a huge part of our culture the rodeo livestock eating cattle raising beef you know pray for rain eat beef that's kind of like the the slogan of the middle of texas it's like god send rain and keep eating beef <laughs> anyway, it's good for the, the agriculture anyways <laughs> so, anyways um what the fuck was i saying did you oh my god yeah that's right anyway, so he was like what's up fascist <laughs> I don't know, whatever, whatever, whatever. I look like a dumbass. I have orange hands in my white vintage gown and my little fucked off ribbons. And I'm talking about the rodeo. I love barrel racers, okay? I like watching uh, Fallon Taylor. She's got a lot of interesting footage online and whatnot. You can watch her. And I like, I like following her career. She's very interesting. I also, um, you guys are probably like, because here's the thing i am very mercurial i can fuck around with anybody like i'll fucking hang out with anybody i i have always been that way i can hang out with gang bangers and cowboys and goths and this and that and the other you know it's just it's just me you know i got friends that are cops i got friends that are fucking slinging drugs i got friends that I got friends in highs and low places. I got friends that are sisters. I got a friend that's a sister of one of the Texas senators. So I know the Texas senators family and they hang out with George Bush all the time. And I got friends over here and friends over there and la 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 la, la you know. And so it's, I'm just very mercurial. Now, do I fuck around with everybody? Like, like I fuck around with everybody, right? But do I agree with everyone? <laughs> no. Oh my God. You can hang out with people you don't agree with, bitch. It's called exposure. You've got to know what the fuck is up with people sometimes. You got to sniff their roses. See, this smells like shit. You know what I'm saying? So even though I do have friends who are sisters of a senator, I don't always agree with what the fuck she says. I don't agree with the fuck he does. In fact, she don't even agree with him. So it's like a whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? So whatever. I got, I got friends in high and low places because I like talking to people. I like fucking around and being like, hey, what's up? What do you think? What do you generally think? Like, what do you think? What are you doing? What do you think? And so there's, I don't really ever kind of, unless somebody treats me a certain way, unless somebody sexualizes me and treats me like a lesser human, like a piece of meat or an object, I don't fuck around with those people because there ain't nothing really I could learn from you trying to possess me and put me in a box. Like, mm -mm. I like being free. 
I like going places, talking to people, experiencing things. I like doing that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I, like I said, I like going here, there, whatever. And you guys are probably, you probably don't agree with me. That's fine. Um, I don't really give a fuck what you think. But I do, but I don't. You understand what I'm saying? I'm curious, but like at the center, at the core of my being, does it really affect me what you think about me? No. You could call me. I mean, like I said, there, I've said it many times before. There's nothing you could say to me that my mother hasn't point blank told me to my face. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Uh, anyways, sorry, my face is itchy. <laughs> so anyways, I like watching J.B. Mooney and Dale Brigsby. I like watching their shit. Um, they have like a podcast. They, they, um, they have a ranch and they go on, you know, I like rodeo stuff. So I like watching Fallon Taylor and J.B. Mooney. And I know you probably look at me and go, bitch, you? And I'm like, yeah, bitch, me. Uh, yeah, I do. And so whatever. Now, do I agree with everything they say? No. <laughs> absolutely not but do i love the rodeo yes and it, it's fucking difficult because i do i show up to places looking like i came out of a casket and then i gotta talk to farmer john and he's like oh my god yeah, it's, it gets old it's like i want to put those that noise canceling headphones in and go to the rodeo because people it's the same fucking shit every time oh my god it's not halloween wow you look scary honey look there's a clown or or uh they're <laughs> the hispanic um the hispanics they here um in my town what they do frequently is they they call me the yerona um and they tell their children that i'm real and that they'll leave their kids with me if they don't act right and so it's really funny because um, that happens a lot here. <laughs> I don't know why they keep doing that to me, but they're like, I told you she's real. And like, I was at the store. It happened to me. I was sitting in my friend's driveway and it happened. And then I was sit. I was walking through the store and this father told his son to act right because I was going to eat his child. <laughs> Bitch, I can't get a fucking break. Like I self-expression ain't for the week. I'm just going to tell you right now, if you want to dress like this, Make sure that you got a little bit of a spinal column because they're going to fucking shake your ass up. They're going to say stuff. They're going to throw shit at you. They're going to say shit. They're going to say all kinds of crazy shit about you. And uh, it, it doesn't, who gives a fuck? It's, it's all made up. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, like, it's a lie. It's all made up. Like, no, no. It's just something people say. People are going to say things. Should you value everything everybody says ever? I don't know. It's an individual thing. It's up to you. I don't personally. I mean, people have said all kinds of shit to me. The worst thing is whenever it happens to my kids. So one of my sons is very, he's like me. He's a little different. He's a little different and that's fine. And I encourage that because it was, they tried to systematically stomp it out of me. And so I, Uno reverse card that with my children. If they want something, I support it. Let's go see if we could get it or get it for you. Or if you're interested in that, fantastic. You know, I build them up and I feel like if I could do that for them, they'll go a little further than I did. It took me 32 years to finally sit here and tell the truth about everything and accept my life is what it is and how it was. and then also have the fucking audacity to live out loud. You know what I'm saying? So it's just people are bastards. And um, should you then listen to what bastards say? I don't know. It's up to you. I don't know. I'll listen to it once. I'll listen to what you say once. And if I resonate with it, save that for later. And if I don't, trash pile compost, fuck it. We'll grow something else, bitch. It's fine. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, um, am I the Yarona? Am I a fucking child drowner? No, bitch. But people use me, <laughs> my existence, to make their children behave. So what the fuck ever? People are going to do whatever the fuck people want to do, you know? And you can't really control that. You can to an extent. You could blacklist words in your comment section and do things like that. But people are still going to try to, their life always life finds a way bitch and sometimes for worse sometimes in a bad way so anyways yeah 
Yeah, anyway, so like I was saying, I got relatives and friends that are this, that, the other. I got all kinds of relatives and friends. Now, do I agree with everybody? <laughs> Absolutely not. Some of those motherfuckers are crazy and stupid. Like, <laughs> And yet, you can still learn something from a crazy, stupid bitch. Can you not? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can learn a lot from a crazy bastard if you have enough, if you're brave enough, if you're brave enough. Um, I don't know. So here's the thing. I'm feeling extraordinarily and exceptionally mischievous, okay? I've already kind of shared an intimate thing. I do donuts in the parking lot. Sometimes when I'm alone in the car and I'm on those long stretches of road, I like testing the boundaries of my vehicle and seeing how fast that bitch can go, how fast she can fly down those roads, how quickly I could get to a place. And I love barrel racing. So there's something in me that's just it's exciting to go very fast. I like it. And personally, I'm very mercurial. I like going fast. I like thinking and talking and exchanging very quickly. And it's a part of my nature. It's a part of who I am. Um, do you have to agree with it? No, you don't have to do anything, babe. I don't care what you do. Your life is yours. Mine is mine. I'm just sharing with you in this time and space intersection. If you don't agree... <laughs> if, that's my son's phone. If you don't agree with what I say, any time you could just shut this video off. I'm not going to feel bad. If you unsubscribe, it's not going to be a stake in the heart. Like, I don't care. If you say, hey, fuck you, bitch. Fuck you too, girl. What the fuck is up? You could still hate me. We could be friends. You know what I'm saying? I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but you could call me all kinds of crazy shit. And then later on, you might be like, actually, no, I kind of like that bitch. And that's fine. I'm not going to judge you for that. I think really the only thing I judge is when somebody treats me like I'm a piece of meat. When somebody is like treating me less than humans and I'm just like, ew, oh my god. Like people, ugh, they have this very um, narrow view of women or people who have uterus and female reproductive organs. There's a very narrow view of what they're allowed to be. They're allowed to serve and la 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 it's bullshit you know what i'm saying like women people who have vaginas and uterus you could do whatever the fuck you want people are like oh you need to go get married and you no you don't gotta do that shit bitch and just because i'm married and i have kids it doesn't mean that you have to do that shit like you could do whatever the fuck you want <laughs> And, and people are so like people are real wrapped up in the ideas that they are confined they're confined somehow by something anything it could be a word a person an overarching ideology of the masses or something like that like you know like whatever but like bitch you ain't confined by shit hon you can do whatever the fuck you want at any given time you do have free will to an extent if I want to, I could just shut this video off and start running naked as fast as I can. Now, will I get arrested? Maybe if they catch me fast enough. But, like, I don't know. Maybe not. Like, I don't know. Like, whatever. But <laughs> you're not really... I, you got to start practicing um, letting go and detaching from these ideas that you are constrained by something. And whatever is constraining you, you got to test the boundaries of it. How tight are those shackles? How tight is that collar? Can you take it off? Can you wiggle out? Can you get sweaty enough and rub, you know, crack a hand and finger and slip through? How good are you with magic? Can you pull a rabbit out of your hat, babe? Can you pull a rabbit out of your ass? Like, come on. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter, babe. Like, listen, you could do, I'm giving you permission right now to reach for your dreams, to dream. Do think, well, you know, here's the biggest issue. When I talk to people, which I do all the time, I already told you, bitch, I talk to cowboys, drug dealers, felons, cops, rodeo queens, people on the streets of New Orleans. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to ask you and I'm going to say, hey, what's up? What's going on? What is this? What's going on? You know, I'm very in curious and inquisitive. I want to know. Like, sometimes I just want to know, you know? No other reason than I'm just fucking curious. I just want to know. And it's not like, Maybe it is selfish desire. I, I maybe the curiosity is selfish. I don't. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but I ask myself billions of questions a day. Why the fuck should I not ask you billions of questions a day? In fact, I annoy a lot of my family members because I'm always asking questions. 
sometimes I just like, God damn, shut the fuck up, bitch. And I'm like, no, mm -mm, babe, mm -mm, I am not shutting up. When I die, I'll shut up. Maybe not. Maybe I'll be a nosy ghost. I'll be a nosy, noisy ghost. I don't know. I don't know. It's undetermined. Not sure. Maybe. Um, but anyways. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, I just, I don't know if it's selfish. I don't know if my question is selfish. Here, that's how I learned, though. So, for example, let me give you an example. I'll give you an example, then I'm going to go back to the, um, well, okay. And then my brain's getting twisted up. Okay, here's the thing. I talk to people and I'm like, what do you want out of life? What are your dreams? You had a million dollars, free will, you know, everybody's taking, even your husband, your kids, everybody was taken care of, your partner, your wife, whatever. Everything was taken care of and you had nothing to fucking worry about, bitch. What would you be doing? What would you be doing? You know, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to own a business? What kind of business you know oh well I, I well well no i don't give a fuck about well or but bitch i asked you a question what do you want to do in your life well i, I don't have the money now i didn't say that you didn't have i am asking you if you had every fucking thing you ever desired what would your life look like what do you really want if you had all those blockages out of the way all those what ifs and buts in the compost pile what would you be doing What would you be doing? Drop a comment. What would you be doing? Okay, so like I said before, I would own like a ranch somewhere. I would have horses and I would be doing barrel racing like and homesteading and writing a book. Um, maybe have a podcast with my friend. Um, just having a nice permaculture cycle at my ranch. So everything, I could grow my own food for the animals and then eat the animals I raise as well as have a garden and then the garden goes back. And so what I'm raising, I am feeding with, and it, it just goes into each other. It would be a perfect little cycle, a self-replicating beautiful cycle that was sustainable to an extent. That's what my, my dream world looks like. It looks like a, a, a sustainable cycle of um, life and death as well as the excitement of barrel racing but here's the thing that i do not like about barrel racing it gives the horses have a certain anxiety the only thing i don't like about it the only thing that i personally don't want to go and do is there's a type of there is a type of anxiety of the being a barrel racing horse they have they know to go and they know to run and that's all they know is to run as fast as they can and maybe, maybe that's how I feel. So that's why I'm attracted to it because I feel like a horse that has been exposed to barrel racing her whole life, you know? And so that's just how I feel. I feel like I have a, a deep amount of empathy for horses who do that. And there's like a whole system whenever they retire them, when they get old or they hurt themselves and they can't do it anymore. Um, or they've gone through surgeries because of their stomach. There's a whole thing. Horses are so amazing and beautiful and dangerous. I love it. I love them. Um, they're so magnificent and um, beautiful and silly and funny and goofy. And they're just great mammals. They're great, beautiful mammals. Um, but whenever they do retire, there's a unlearning that has to happen with the horses and they have to learn how to calm down they have to learn to stop running that's something i've had to deal with i had to learn to stop running and to accept slowly walking breathing slowly allowing a full breath and a full exhale and not shallow breathing and, and i've had to train my body because it's like i said the entirety of the beginning of my life was like barrel racing going as fast as I can running as fast as I can running 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 from situation to situation to situation to situation you know so it's, it's very difficult and so maybe that's why I have such an empathy for these kind of horses I'm like because yeah me too bitch um some of them will just like fucking fuck themselves up real bad and end up having to get put down it's very sad and um so they don't ever get to like have that life without knowing what barrel racing is but now there's people like Fallon Taylor and things like that where they take great care of their horses their horse wins them 
thousands of dollars in competitions and they funnel the thousands of dollars back into their horses care they give them spa treatments and like uh, they they take care of them they massage them they give them vitamins and everything to make sure the horse is uh cared for as if it is a god and i i love that that's i love when people take care of their animals like that where there is a give and take it's not just abuse and use it is also respect and care and it flows it flux you know the the flow of the it wins you money and then you funnel the money back into the horse and the horse is taken care of trained yes trained to an extent but there's these moments of the horse's life that they can slow down and live a more full life of like being slow and, and understanding having the capacity within their little horse brain that there's a time and place whenever they're in an arena they know to go when they're behind that gate and the thing go, they go you know um, but then in other, when they're exposed to other things, they don't have to. It's really cool. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I find it fascinating. I've always loved horses. Um, yeah, I don't know. So that's what my dreams kind of look like is, uh, that sustainable homestead, barrel racing, podcast with my friends, hanging out, you know, just hanging out, being alive, um, having a community, um, that, I mean... You take some, you leave some, you need a, a, a nice place somewhere where there's a give and take uh, for the community to meet up and be like, hey, blah, 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 you know, share ideas and whatnot. And I don't know. I like the openness of sharing ideas. And I like the fact that we can all have very, very different ideas and all simultaneously be uh, on the earth at the same time. The earth is big enough for everybody to be on it and uh, for us all to have these strange ideas and feelings and thoughts and and that's okay um i think it's cool and i think that i don't like i said i have the capacity within myself and if i'm i am nobody i'm no one of any consequence like i don't fucking matter i really don't i could be gone tomorrow and just gone forever and the, the world is neither more or less without me here or whatever so i understand that because i am nobody truly 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 i am nobody that if nobody can feel this way and have the understanding and the capacity within myself to see the perspective, to see that the world is big enough for contradictions and this and that, left and right, up and down and in and out. If nobody can feel this way, if no one, nobody can feel this way, then everybody could feel this way at any time, you know? Um, we could all come to that place in space. And then you could go back to somewhere else. You could go back to your own personal contradictions, your own personal biases. Like, well, I hate the color green and I hate everybody who hates the color green. Maybe that's your fucking life, babe. Like, cool. Okay. I'm a green hater extraordinaire. Hell yeah. Hold it down, bitch. You hate the color green? Fuck that color. Whatever. You hate it? Cool. I like it, but I accept that you hate it. See, how, how hard was that? Was it hard? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, you hate me? All right, bitch, hate me. Oh, my God. You fucking hate my ass? <sighs> Hell yeah. Not as much as I do, honey. Come on now. Get in line. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I love. I love and accept myself. But there was a point where I was my biggest hater. I am. You know, no, no. Fuck it. I am my biggest hater, so... You hate me not as much as I hate me, honey. Girl, get in line. Not kidding. Um, you find me embarrassing? <laughs> I find myself way more embarrassing. I, I embarrass myself so much. I give myself goose flesh. So let's not fucking joke around about that shit. You will not hate or think I'm more embarrassing than I hate or think I'm more embarrassing. Than, you know what I'm saying? But no, no, no. I don't hate myself. I am grateful I'm alive. There was moments where I had a lot of personal tension in my own body and, and my own thoughts about myself. And now I'm just at the point where I love and accept myself. I started doing the radical self-acceptance. Um, I am and I am not. And that's okay because it doesn't fucking matter. You know, like I said, in a moment's time right now, like in that five seconds, we could all be just is there anything you could really do about it? No. Is it anybody's fault? I don't know. Do I care to push blame on others? No. 
I want to go read my books. I want to go light my nice candles and, and smell clean clothes and buy vintage nightgowns and collect taxidermy crow feet and uh, pretty jewelry and wear stupid ribbons in my hair and have my dumb fucking ideas and share them with my goofy ass friends and family members. And then I want to go investigate how the rest of the world thinks. What do you think? How do you feel? You know, and, and sit outside of them and be like, well, I'm not you. I'm me. I have my own thoughts and feelings. And if somebody asks, I can share and you could take a piece like a rainbow fish. You could take a scale and we could all share the rainbow, you know, whatever. Um, but it comes from within. You know what I'm saying? Now, do I have a community of people? Yeah, I do. Unfortunately, I'm starting to realize a lot of them um they struggle with the same mental illness or mental the the mental shit the mental that i deal with um a lot of the poets and authors and writers who i have thought the same way they think or i feel the same way they felt a lot of them have just you know and so i'm at this point where i'm realizing that is there is there too much like i get to the point where I'm sitting here thinking like my community of people is scattered throughout time and space. A lot of them deal with the same kind of mental struggles that I do. Uh, feeling unworthy that your art is not good enough to show anybody feeling shameful about it, trying to get yourself out there and being conflicted and, and confused and being embarrassed about existing and feeling like all of these strange feelings. I, and so when I found out that there's people throughout time and space, that have shared what I thought to be extremely unique thoughts, feelings, circumstances, um, emotions that led to experiences that were life or death. It hurts because a lot of them ended up dying. And the fact that I'm alive and I've survived a lot of what they went through, you know, we've had very similar feelings and thoughts and, and crisis. And um, the fact that I'm here, I feel scared because I'm like god damn like they all got to the point where they didn't want to exist anymore I've been on that edge before many times in the past I have a therapist now a trauma specialist and I talk to my psychiatrist and things like that but a lot of people didn't make it but their art did their art survived thank the fucking universe because it made me not feel so alone it made me not feel like I was, uh, like, it, it sucks. It's a very strange feeling. But there's other people that are still alive. And I'm very grateful to be alive in this time-space plop. Because I think this is the only time and space that I could ever fully be alive in. Without, you know, getting, uh, you know, I don't know, wrangled by the masses and torched or something like that. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> now in the past, have people told me that I should go in my life? Of course they have. People are fucking weird. But I found it to be um, heartbreaking and also fantastical that I found like certain poems by certain authors, but a lot of them all kind of like, they're all dead. And certain art from certain artists that had similar struggles and well, they're all dead too. But because their art and their poetry and their words lasted throughout time and space, I was able to, it felt like I was being hugged by them and their words because they went through something very similar as to what I'm going through. And even though that they're not alive anymore, their words are still haunting the halls of this earthly realm. And I appreciate that. So you may think that you're fucking embarrassing and you're stupid and you're not worth a goddamn. I'm here to tell you that you're not embarrassing. You are worth a goddamn and fuck what everybody else says about you. Um, your art, your stupid little words you scribble on your journal, your shitty art that you think is shitty, it actually could help somebody 30, 40, 50, 180 years from now. You never know. The most important thing for you to do is to not hide it because you're shameful of it. And the most important thing for you to do is take that shame and put it in the compost pile and fucking grow something different. 
cut the tree of shame down and just kill it at the root and do something else with your life. Um, and some people are like, well, I cannot face ridicule. Well, you're going to have to start fucking laughing at yourself then. It starts small. You got to start accepting yourself for who you are as you are. And then you could start realizing, do I want this anymore? Is that really a part of who I am? Is this part of a facade? Is this a false face? Is this a false mask I could take off and throw away or put into the compost pile? What is it? You know, you got to begin the questioning process. You know, um, is the group you're a part of? Are the groups, is the shit you're hearing from the internet? Or are you a part of a Facebook group that's making you a certain bias? Do you need to leave it, block certain people? to get a better perspective like it too much this way not enough that way is the you know what i'm saying when you're making a tortilla okay when you're making a tortilla you have a ball of dough and you have to slap it on there and roll it out this way pick it up flip it around and roll it out that way and roll it up and down to make the nice circle the shape of the tortilla right um but too long and you're just making a long piece you know do you have, how you have to stretch yourself and fold yourself in a better way to get a full perspective a full picture of your perspective i don't know does that make sense probably not i don't care i just use a fucking metaphor for fucking tortilla bitch is life not like being a fucking tortilla like is life not tortillas <laughs> is it not i don't know what if jesus was mexican and he was like this tortilla is my fucking foot <laughs> eat the foot <laughs> shut up <laughs> Anyways, so you are important. You do matter. I do give a good goddamn about you. I think that even if you have shitty art, you should still find a way to get it out there. Um, and if you're like, oh, I'm too scared. People are going to judge me. Um, sacrifice that fear at the altar of yourself and do it anyways. Because listen, hon, um, they're, like I said, the people who have helped me in my life survive because I read their words. They all felt the same way you do, bitch. Like, they were embarrassed to be alive. They hated themselves. They hated their art. They felt isolated, alone, angry, frustrated, confused, obliterated, heartbroken. And all the nasty, shitty, shit, shit, shit. The pile of shit of the human experience. They felt that too. And it was on them and it was compressing them and, and holding them down. And they still were able to pump out art, to slide that art through to an extent. So what I'm saying to you is that if you feel crushed by the weight of the entire fucking universe, it is on your shoulders, it's compacting your spine, the fucking vertebrae are smooshing, the jellies coming out. You need to express, you need to still express art, even in those moments where you're like, I hate everything. Maybe you need to write that down. I fucking hate everything. And you crumple up that piece of fucking paper and you throw it into a fire at the ocean. Or you put it in a jar and you throw that jar into the fucking river and you smash it. You know, maybe not a river where a lot of people go, but if there's running water, you know. I notice that a lot of people who struggle with strange, they're not strange. It's not unique. Let me explain that too. Uh, you going through horse shit. You literally, your life sucking so much dick is not a unique experience. Everybody's life sucks dick at some time. Okay, um, and I know that's vulgar and I don't really give a fuck. Listen, everybody's life sucks at some fucking point. Everybody's does. Everyone. Your mommies, your daddies, your ball headed grannies. Everybody. <laughs> everybody's life sucks. My life has sucked. Sometimes my life still sucks. So what do you do? You gotta learn how to juggle. You gotta learn how to make balloon animals. You gotta learn how to laugh at yourself. You gotta learn how to like laugh at the absurdity of life because it's so short and it's so fucking stupid. People are stupid. And we've given the people who are stupid, everybody, not just me or you or whatever, like, yeah, we're all stupid. Let's level the playing field. Albert Einstein was a fucking dumbass. Stephen Hawking, an idiot, a babbling buffoon. Nikola Tesla, he's a baby. He's a baby. We're not going to talk about Nikola Tesla. He's baby. He's not stupid. He's the only smart person. I'm kidding. We are all stupid. We're all fucking idiots. We don't really know anything. And we assume we do. And that's where the stupidity lies. Except the fact that it is and it is not. Maybe. That's okay too. 
And some people can't do that. They're like, no, they're like a dog with a nasty bone that's cutting into their teeth and slicing up their gums and they've got infections and stuff. And you're like, give me the bone. They're, no, I'm holding on to my ideas. You're going to die because of it. I don't care. Do you think it's smart or should you let go, accept the pain, allow your jaw to move around? And then you could eat food. You cannot ingest anything if you're holding on to an old nasty bone because you're too frightened someone else is going to take it. Maybe someone else does need that bone. It's okay for you to grab ideas and move them and set them down and pick up new ones. It's okay to be fluid and move around. Nothing is really solidified. It, none of your lives are really going to be forever, bitch. Like, this moment is this moment. This moment is that moment. You know, okay? In five minutes, I could fall down the stairs and, like, fucking land on a pumpkin. I got pumpkins going up and down my stairs. I hope not. <laughs> not the wood. Anyways. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, it's okay to not take life so seriously. Is the world completely in shambles right now? No, bitch, it's still there. Go outside and hug a tree. Go outside and dig a hole and put something in that hole. If somebody, what are you doing? You just be like, I'm digging a hole. Why? Fuck, man, look, life's been really hard. I just need to dig this hole, okay? Like, stop asking questions. You get a fucking shovel and help me dig this hole. <laughs> Or get out of my face. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're digging a hole at the graveyard. They're like, why are you here? Babe, life has just been hard. Okay, I'm just planning ahead. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry. I'm being stupid. But yeah, I think we're all stupid. We're all idiots to an extent. We really are. People can do amazing things. Sure. But I think within every amazing thing that every human does, there is a capacity for something horrific to happen. Like Albert Einstein doing all the shit he did. Sure, it was amazing. But was it also horrifying? Yeah, absolutely. Within every discovery, there is the, the, the uh, how do you say it? the uh, That word, the, uh, the chance for progress to be progressive or the chance for it to destroy the entire universe as we know it. So pff, fuck it. Like let that fucking shit fly. <laughs> Ten toes down. Like this fucking whatever. But I don't give a fuck. Listen. It is and it is not. And that's fine. I don't it's none of my business, honestly. But I'm okay today. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start leaving. Um, you know what really helps me, and I'm gonna be honest. I have lotions all around the house to have a, their smells, their different scents, and um, scent is really important to me. Um, this one smells like a pumpkin swirl cake. It smells really good. I do that, and then it it literally helps your brain shift from a thought pattern if you introduce a scent, a flavor, a taste, something. Um, Let's say you are in a fucked off mood. I mean, I have eucalyptus oil right here. This one's called Dracula. It's actually from an Etsy shop that my friend has. Um, this is one of my favorite smells. <sighs> that only she makes. When she dies, the recipe's gone forever with her. And I think about that. I think about that. When I buy from Etsy sellers, I think... This is from a human, not an entity. The human. Maybe an entity helped create it. You know. My friend made this oil. It's from her Etsy shop. It's called Dracula. And it is my favorite smell in the entire universe. And I think to about, you know, she's an individual human, not a corporate entity. She made this. This is her recipe. And it is my favorite smell. Right after a wreck I had, I I found this. She was at a, a market and I found her and she let me smell all the scents that she had and it helped shift something in my brain. So I do believe in the power of scent changing a situation, the olfactory responses. But that smell is my favorite smell. It's called Dracula and um, it is so delicious. And it is so masculine and intoxicating. It's a very strange scent. It is old. It smells like absinthe and books and cigar smoke and leather. It's a very strange scent. It's lemony and yet limey and yet 
foreign and strange and beautiful. It's a great scent. Um, and I think to myself, when she dies, the recipe's gone forever. And I get this hoarding sensation within me that like, what if she dies tomorrow? Like, what if I don't ever get to smell that smell again? And there's like this strange appreciation I have. When I buy things on Etsy from people, I'm like, this is from a human. This is from a real human in my time period. Wow. This came from a human being who loved what they did and did what they loved. And you can feel it. Um, that is a great human. Ex it's a great human experience to feel something. <laughs> to feel something. It's so good. Anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. Sm smells for me help change my... Um, my life around me and then also uh, color therapy you can do color therapy you can literally change the light bulbs in your room to different colors and it should help it could help it can help um, you could do a light bath where you change the light bulbs for a color and soak yourself in the color purple or blue they have LED strips that you could do you could put in your room a lot of tiktokers they have them and things of that nature uh, painting your walls putting up wallpaper um, things of that nature um, music having classical music play around the house sometimes I do that I put classical music on around the house and I just let it echo in the hallways and that helps so if you find yourself being pulled away from yourself and into strange places and avenues you don't really appreciate as a human being and maybe you feel like you might do something stupid smell something smell something smell coffee um, this one's called otherworldly it's from love sick witchery this one smells good too I collect a lot of different scents because I like smelling things at different times. Different lotions and hand creams and things of that nature is fun. And not just me, the ancient people in Egypt and whatnot, our ancestors, our far, far, far away removed ancestors, they used to do these things too, collect jewelry and find smells and makeup. And so it kind of connects me back to that. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'm so sorry if you're not having a fantastic day. If your life sucks right now, it's not going to be permanent. It can't be. It's impossible for your life to suck forever. And um, you only have a little bit of time on this planet, really, give or take. I don't know how many years we all have. It's different for every individual. Um, but it's important for you to put out art, to be honest about your feelings, and to do what you feel is morally correct. Um, not to fall into line with the masses, question what they're doing. If you're in a Facebook group or a group online or you have to, you're subscribed to too many people saying the same things, block, delete, um, unsubscribe, uh, leave groups until you could come back to yourself, sit with yourself, do the hermit's dance of winter and be like, well, what is life? What am I? What, what do I really want? If I had a million dollars and everything was taken care of, what would my life look like? what would I want to do with my life and then start making small adjustments every single day write it down pin it to your mirror like put my dream to have a ranch and do barrel racing and blah, 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 whatever my dream, to own a fancy car to own a restaurant to um to eat olives in Italy <laughs> I don't know whatever your dream is however silly and stupid and far out it seems write it pin it somewhere you could see every day kiss it every day i don't know like leave little smoochy marks on it every day i don't know. start praying to your own self to your own dreams and making them a reality pull them down from the headspace of the other world and bring them into this world you know by any means necessary so i hope you guys have a great day and if you're not having a great day don't worry tomorrow is only gonna be worse i'm just kidding <laughs> Kidding. hey listen and if tomorrow is worse put on your nicest outfit wear some fucking red lipstick and just kiss that mirror and throw one of these up baby we're gonna be good we're we're rock and roll bitch like we're gonna be fine put on your big scary music put on some patsy climb put on whatever you love listening to put on your favorite movie wear your favorite pajamas out in public except the absurdity who gives a fuck you're still you babe even though you're upset, inside of you, you're still you, hun. And nobody could take that from you. Even if they try to take that from you, nobody could take that from you, honeybee. So, good luck on your journeys. Take care of yourself. Take your medicine. I gotta go take my medicine. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>